welcome back folks to the wp wp tonic show um it's episode 343 i've got a great guest moissa zove i think that's the best i've done so far so isn't it, that was moissa? so good it was wasn't it I mean, even for a cranky old person like me i can do something right <laughs> can't i would you <laughs> would you like to quickly introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers please yeah, sure. Uh, thank you for trying so hard on pronouncing my name correctly. <laughs> that was really good. Uh, so uh, my name is Moita and I'm a Facebook ads expert. I work with seven plus figure businesses. I help them develop and implement Facebook advertising strategies. And it all got started um, with me actually getting fired from my previous job and that's how I kind of ended up here. I have my own boutique agency at the moment called Super Spicy Media. Uh, and yeah, I'm trying to keep it spicy with uh, helping as many people as possible, um, just up and going with our Facebook advertising strategies. Moisa is an old friend of the show. She's tolerated my butchery really graciously. <laughs> uh, um, Cindy, would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers? Sure. Hi, everyone. Cindy Nicholson here. Um, I'm from the coursewhisperer.com and uh, I help on, uh, entrepreneurs that want to create online courses. Right. So we're going to be delving into um, social media with a specific emphasis on Facebook advertising aimed at the, um, the course owner, the membership owner. Um, but before we go really down into that, my first question is... Um, could you tell us a little bit about how you got where you are today? You know, what led you into the crazy world of social media? Uh, I wanted to do something that was fun and I already spent just too much time on Facebook and on social media. So I decided, you know what, what if I do something with that and just find a reason to spend even more time on Facebook and social media. So that's how I pretty much decided that I want to do. Um, I started first by developing general social media strategies for Twitter, for Facebook and so on. Um, but then after a while, I decided to niche down on Facebook advertising because first of all, it was very compelling to me. Um, the features that they launched the, all of the possibilities that are available within the ecosystem. It was just so attractive. And I loved the fact that it was so tangible. So you could pretty much set up a campaign and track the exact purchases and conversions that you were getting from Facebook ads. So I love that aspect of it. And that's why I decided to niche down on Facebook ads. And I've been doing this I think for more than two years, just specializing on Facebook advertising and learning all about it and teaching all about it. So, um, but yeah, everything got started, like I, like I mentioned before, from losing my job. I was previously a copywriter at an advertising agency and uh, yeah, we didn't, we didn't go along very well. So <laughs> I got fired after a while and just went on my own and did my own thing. That's great. So so how, what made you decide to go from, you know, the corporate world, you know, working, you know, for somebody to deciding to actually go on your own there? So I absolutely hated all of the different levels that I had to go through when I, I was a copywriter um, on paper, but I did pretty much everything. And whenever I had an idea and I had a copy, it had to go through all different levels and it, in order to get accepted. And then again, through all different levels in order to get the feedback. Um, and I just hated that. And I didn't have any say in, you know, how to, like, I, I wrote the copy, but when it came to like the larger scale and ideas and so on, I didn't have any say in it. And I wanted to be my own boss. I hated going to the office. I hated the nine to five aspect of it. I hated that I couldn't work from home. And since I was in a creative business, I tried talking to them about this. And I tried saying, you know what? I'm more creative in the evening, but they just didn't listen. So they were like, no, you have to be there nine to five. And I hated that. So uh, I got myself fired because of it. <laughs> That's great. So um, what do you think people, why do you think people struggle so much with Facebook advertising? And what are a couple of the um, basic mistakes that you see a lot of people making with it? 
Um, the number one reason they're not succeeding is because they don't have a strategy. Everyone wants to do Facebook ads, but not everyone takes the time to actually sit down and educate themselves about the strategy and what they need to and what their goals are and how to develop the strategy around those goals and the step-by-step process behind it. They don't educate themselves about different features and how to get started because it's so easy to open up your Facebook advertising account and just launch a campaign. And because it's so easy, everyone just starts advertising their paid services and their paid products without investing in all of those different steps that come before that, like generating traffic to your, to, to your web page, generating leads and so on. And I don't know, running ads for, to your webinar. Um, they don't really invest their time and money into that, but they go straight into promoting their paid services or products and they're unsuccessful because of it. Um, it's just not educating themselves about what they need to do basically. Yeah, it's interesting because you'll often see that on Facebook, people talking about how Facebook ads don't work for them or they spend oh, yeah. X amount and, you know, it didn't work for them. And, and I think there's a lot of reservation or, you know, um, people being tentative about going down the Facebook ad because you have to make this investment. Um, yeah. So, so if somebody is just kind of starting out with Facebook ad, you, you talked about this strategy. What, what are some of the specific things they should be thinking of? Um, before they actually, you know, go to, to, to spend the money. So the, f- the first thing that they should do when, when they just start thinking about running a campaign, they don't need to have a, a launch date or anything like that. They, they don't need to say, yes, I'm launching the campaign next week. When you start thinking about it, the first thing that you need to do is implement a Facebook pixel to your web page. Uh, when you do that, you'll be able to generate a lot of data about your users before you even start advertising. And once you decide that, yes, you want to launch your first campaign now, you'll be able to retarget all of your website visitors and all of that data will generate before you even start. So that's one of the first things that the first things that they should do. And the second thing that I really emphasize when talking to not just my clients, but the students to my, to my course, when, when I talk to them is when you launch your first campaign in order to get really excited about all the different possibilities, you need to establish that first tiny win. If your first campaign is unsuccessful, you're probably not going, going to continue. Oh, she froze on my side, Jonathan. Sorry. Oh, I, th- I think Cindy froze, actually. <laughs> yeah, Cindy, that's frozen. There we go. Yes. <laughs> in, mid- in mid-sentence, how bad. So um, I think what you just said was great. Um, so when it comes to actually people that um, have got online courses or, or membership sites and they built it on, on WordPress, which they should do, uh, <laughs> I'm, only slightly, I'm only slightly biased, uh, Um Got any tips how they could get started with using the power of Facebook advertising to, to promote that course? The course or, yeah. So first of all, the good thing about WordPress is that there are a lot of different plugins that you can take advantage of without, if you're not really technical savvy like a lot of people that's why people use wordpress they don't want to focus on the code they don't want to have anything to do with the code so they do wordpress and download a bunch of plugins so you have a lot of plugins for face for facebook as well first of all if you don't want to mess with the code with the facebook pixel you can just go ahead and download a plugin for that and paste the Facebook pixel ID in there and you'll have a Facebook pixel implemented on your webpage. So that's the first thing that they should do. And the second thing, what I really recommend, and it kind of ties back to the question um, about, you know, where they should start and how to establish that first tiny win. What I would really recommend is not starting by um, advertising their course and trying to generate as many purchases of their course as possible. But I would start maybe a step backward and trying to generate leads. Leads 
that kind of tie back into the email marketing software that they use and then use those leads to guide them through an email sequence. And at the end of that email sequence, you promote the course to them. So that's what I would do because you're able to establish that time you win and feel good about the campaign that you just launched, feel good about the results that you're generating and you can continue on from there. And you're going to be in much better mood and a lot more excited than if you start promoting the actual course and don't make any sales and you just leave it all together. Yeah, I, I think I'm getting um, the picture that you're, you're trying to draw here, Moisa. Um, we, are you really saying to, unless you've got a lot of online credibility or a, a lot of relationship with a, a substantial audience to sell straight away through Facebook is going to be difficult? I think that's what you're saying, isn't it? Yes, because selling courses on Facebook, it's, it's not really difficult, but it's difficult if you start your Facebook advertising education. And if that's your first campaign that you launch through Facebook, that, that, if you do that, then it's definitely going to be hard. What you want to do first is you want to do, like I said, that tiny win in order to see how Facebook, how everything is working together what you should be careful of, what you should keep your eye, uh, your eye on. And then when you realize all of that, when you learn from your first campaign, when you start generating some signups and you see what you need to be careful of, that's when you can say, okay, now I've gotten some signups. I see that I, I, I have some credibility uh, with my Facebook ads and I can continue investing in promoting the Facebook, uh, the, the video course. Yeah. So I might be a bit slow here. I just want to kind of pin this down. So what I think you, what you were saying there is it's, it's not that you couldn't sell direct the courses. It's that if you're starting off, um, you want your first, your first challenge should be manageable and where people are going wrong is they try and sell direct their course and you need experience and you need a, a build up of knowledge before that could be even be possible. Is that, am I got that that's, right? Yes, that's perfectly. And that's a great sum up. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I got something right. So that's good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. It's been one of those mornings. I've had plumbing problems, audience. I've had the plumbers in charming people. Um, we, <laughs> just, um, I'll go for it over to Cindy. You got a question, Cindy? Um, I I lost you there for a bit, so I don't actually know where. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I better, I better continue actually, and and then you yeah. you had some trouble with uh, Zoom. So um, I'm trying to, you know, you know, with that strategy which you outlined. So I, I think what would be a good strategy is if you. You got some free lead magnet that is related to the course that can give some value and maybe set up a landing page or a Facebook advert to a landing page which um, offers that lead magnet which has some strong linkage to the course. Would that be a, a good strategy? That's, that's a great strategy and that's something that I do as well. So I have a course teaching Facebook advertising and how I start generating some traction is by advertising a free email course about Facebook advertising. So it kind of ties that, that free email course ties into the actual paid course that I sell online. Um, and that's what I do and that's what works. So, um, like I said, just starting with something manageable, which is a great way that you put it. So, um, starting with something manageable, establishing that first tiny win seeing what you need to be careful of and that's when you continue oh that's great we're going to go for our break folks we will be back we'll be discussing more facebook advertising with the master moisa zove i see i'm doing well now aren't I? Yeah. Oh, i'm on a roll <laughs> aren't I? we'll be back in a few moments folks we're coming back my morning's getting better i've had a bit of a session with the plumbers but on my pronunciation of my guest's name has, has re improved. 
dramatically. Cindy, you got a question? Yeah, so thank you. Sorry, I dropped off there a bit for a bit, so I apologize if I'm duplicating some of the questions. So, we're, so you were talking about a strategy to advertise for your online courses. It, would you recommend that um, you have them go through this strategy versus advertising the course itself at the outset? Is that what you guys had been talking about? Or, or would you take this softer approach in terms of offering something of value first versus um, hitting them with, say, an online course at the beginning? I definitely recommend advertising the course as well because it's something that it's tangible and you can actually, when someone purchases a course, you can tie it back into Facebook ads and say, okay, so I spent $200 on selling a course that's $800 profit, let's invest more. But I wouldn't, uh, as we mentioned previously, I wouldn't start if, if that's the first campaign that you're launching, if you're just starting off with Facebook ads, your first campaign shouldn't be promoting the course because you don't know what to be careful of. You don't know what you need to pay attention to, how everything works. And you actually don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars investing into promoting the actual course but getting absolutely nothing back. You're way better off if you invest, let's say $100 and generate leads to your email, uh, email uh, course, to any kind of lead magnet that you have, because you can always reuse those leads. But if you spent $500 promoting your video course and you don't get like even a sale, even a lead, nothing back, like you're left without anything. That's true. Um, I understand, especially, you know, in the call sector, there's a lot of people, um, um, coaches, people that are using their experience to sell a course to a target audience, um, in the health, fitness, um, life improvement field. But I understand that you've got to be very careful in the wording of your copy in your adverts. And it's quite easy to be have your adverts rejected. Have you got any insights about what people have got to be aware of in that area? First of all, Facebook is being really careful about any kind of discrimination, even body shaming when we're talking about fitness industry and healthcare industry. For example, we were so used of before and after photos, like, this is how Moitza looked like before. And this is three weeks after she took our fitness, I don't know, course or whatever. They don't allow that. You cannot advertise before and after photos, for example. That's, if you do that, the best case scenario is that your ads are just not going to be approved and you're going to be able to launch new ads. Worst case scenario though, is they um, just, delete all of your things and they um they not only disapprove your ad but you don't have a facebook advertising anymore it's deactivated and you cannot use it anymore so that's the worst case scenario yeah can i um, just uh, ask about that so what i think you're saying is you send them some adverts they look at them and then they go oh my god and then they go look at your facebook page and maybe their restrictions in the past their position was not so has changed and they look at your site and they think, Oh my God. And then they just cut you out. Yes. So they deactivate your Facebook advertising account and you cannot advertise on Facebook anymore. Sometimes they even hide your Facebook page if you're using inappropriate language and so on. And it's, in my, in my opinion, I think that's for the better because they're trying to create a healthy advertising ecosystem where it has an affair advertising ecosystem where, you know, the sleazy marketing tactics don't work anymore. For example, one thing that they're really paying attention to nowadays is also that what you're advertising in the copy and in the visuals, it has to match the actual landing page being, uh, meaning if you're advertising in, copy, in the copy, if I were advertising my Facebook ads video course, but the landing page would actually be for a fitness video course, they can disqualify uh, and deactivate my Facebook advertising account because 
the product advertised on Facebook does not match the product on the landing page. So you have to be careful about that as well. What I do recommend for all new advertisers is to go through the advertising policies, just skim through what's allowed and what's not allowed to get acquainted with all of their advertising policies. So you don't get yourself a deactivated Um, advertising account. You don't want that. And have you got some resources on your own site or in your course that goes through that, Moisa? I have, I have a whole lesson on um, Facebook advertising policies. And I actually, what we can do is I can um, set up a link with, because I have a document of advertising policies. So I can send you the link to that document so your listeners can download that um, and be- just check that out. That would be really helpful, Moisa. Thank you yeah, so much. It's, it's shorter than the Facebook's version. <laughs> I'm sure it's a lot more spicy and interested. <laughs> I'm sure it's... Uh, I've read some of Facebook policy documents, uh, especially if uh, they reduced me to a coma. But there we go. Um, Cindy, got a question? Well, you've uh, it, it talked about the course that you have um, a couple of times. So I'd like, actually like to talk a little bit more about that in terms of your experience of being an online course creator. So, so can you just uh, talk a little bit, Moitza, about you know how did you decide to come up? How did you decide to create a course? What was the process like, and what was that experience like of creating a course for the first time? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. I have an interesting story. So um, I started, like I said, with general social media strategies. Then I started working with clients specifically focusing on developing their Facebook advertising strategies. And at one point I worked with so many clients and it got like the, the money was great and everything was good. The clients were amazing, but I'm a creator and I missed the creating part. So the, the client work didn't give me the same satisfaction that creating did. And I remember writing my first ebook and selling my first ebook and the thrill that I experienced when I launched it. And when the first people started purchasing my ebook, it was so amazing. And I missed that after years of working with clients and focusing with uh, on client work, I really missed the creating part. And that's what I decided. And it was probably about four months ago that I'm going to fire most of my clients and start working on my course because it's something that I have been talking about doing for years and I never actually got to the point where I, where I would actually sit down and record the lessons and create the course. So four months ago, I fired most of my clients. I kept, I think from 10, I kept two and um, I started working on my course and First of all, it was really overwhelming because I did not know where to begin. It was the first time that I was doing something like that. And I struggled with pretty much everything. And then the process that really worked is um, I sat down one day. I decided, you know what? I'm not going to keep rescheduling this. I'm just going to sit down and do it right now. So I sat down and didn't care about the format, but I just wrote down a ton of bullet points about what I need to teach people. And then I kind of grouped all of those bullet points together by topics. And those topics actually became modules and those bullet points became lessons. Um, And that's when I started to create my actual course. And when I had, when I had um, the structure of it, I set up a landing page and I wanted to validate that product with my audience. So I did a pre-launch and uh, did my first 10K with that pre-launch, pre-launching my course, and it felt really good. It was a lot less than I was used to uh, with client work, Um, but just the satisfaction of having your own product and earning your first 10K with the course, it was really amazing. And that's when, you know, the kind of, it was validated and I went, uh, sat down, uh, and started creating the lessons and recording the lessons. And I've been, st- I, I'm still recording the lessons, but the first feedback is just really amazing and really good. And I cannot wait for this to be actually recorded in total so I can go and focus on marketing even more. 
That's, I, I, that's a great story, especially I love the idea, I, I mean, because your process sounds very sound and, you know, the idea of validating with your audience and everything before, you know, actually going into spending all the time to make it work. And, and so you said you've validated it through just your own audience that you had. Is that the process that you kind of went through to kind of do that validation? Yeah. So the the number one reason why I did that was because none of my lessons were recorded and my audience, my audience knows me. They know that if they pay for a product and if I can see that, okay, it is getting some traction, I'm going to record the lessons. So they know that, but I wasn't so sure that other people would know that other people that don't know me personally, that haven't been a part of my audience for years. So I didn't want to risk the sort of fake validation where they would purchase the course, but in three days they would say, yeah, like I want the videos right now. And they would ask for a refund. I didn't want to experience that. And that's why I focused only on my audience. And now after I finish, um, I, I am marketing the course a little bit now uh, here and there, but after I finish the actual course and when all of the lessons are recorded, I'm just going to focus on really marketing it to other audiences as well. Awesome. Jonathan. I think it's time to wrap it up for the podcast part of the show. Hopefully Moisa will agree to stay on and we can have an additional chat, which you can see on the WP Tonic website and YouTube channel. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and then you'll be notified when we new episodes of the WP Tonic show are put on the YouTube channel. Um, so Moisa, how can people find out more about you, what you're up to and your course? Yeah. So uh, if they're interested in general about Facebook ads and if they want to find more articles about how to get started and all of the new things and new features that Facebook is launching, they can visit superspicymedia.com. Everything is on there, every information. Um, but when it comes to the course, the course can be found on the science of Facebook ads.com. And I'm offering 15% off to all of the listeners with a coupon code WP tonic. And for the resource that we talked about, about the advertising policies and uh, the cheat sheet about all of that, it can be found on superspicymedia.com slash WP tonic. Um, so it's going to be hosted there and I'm always available on email. If anyone has any questions regarding advertising policies or anything, I can be found at moitza at superspicymedia.com. Oh, that's great. And we'll make sure that's all in the show notes, folks, for you. I, I can't highly recommend Moisa. Um, she's a real expert in social media. She's worked with some of the top, I know some of the people that she's worked with. She's really got some great result, results and she's extremely professional. Um, Cindy, how can people find out more about you and what you're up to, Cindy? Thanks, Jonathan. Um, Moitza, thanks for coming on and offering the resources to our audience. We really appreciate it. Um, if, uh, if people struggle, uh, want to create a course just like Moitza was talking about and didn't know what, don't know where to go or how to go about it, that's kind of where I come in and help people. And uh, you can find me at thecoursewhisperer.com. And if you want to build your course, your learning management system on WordPress or have some customization done to it and you don't want to deal with all that technical stuff and you're looking for a trusted resource, come to WP Tonic. We can have a chat and we'll help you build the course of your dreams. That's what we like doing. Um, also, listeners and viewers, we're, me and Cindy would love your feedback about what you what guests you would like us to get in the new year for you and you know what subjects and areas that you're really interested in and would like us to get special guests with insights in those areas so there's loads of ways of contacting us you, um, you can go to the wp tonic website the wp tonic facebook you can twitter me or cindy but we love your feedback about what you would like to hear um, next year. That would be great, wouldn't it, Cindy? That's right. That'd be great. So we're going to wrap up this part of the show. You can watch some more bonus content, um, like I say, on the WP Tonic show with a full set of um, show notes or the YouTube channel. And we'll see you next week, folks. Bye.
I'm on a roll here. So, um, so uh, <laughs> the morning's improving. Uh, um, so, um, so what do you think, you know, what are kind of realistic budgets really when it comes, you know, when you get over that initial, you know, trying out what we've discussed in the podcast part of the show and you're you're getting some traction what what do you think is realistic budgets and really realistic results really it really depends on your industry and the course price and so on i know that a lot of people sell their courses for let's say 100 dollars, and then i know a lot of people who sell their courses at a five thousand up to thirty thousand dollar mark so it really depends what i do want to emphasize here is a lot of people think okay i have a 500 dollar email course And when I spend my first hundred dollars on Facebook ads, I'm definitely getting a sale. I have to be getting a sale at $100 and it's, that's usually not the case. So you have to be ready to invest in Facebook ads at the beginning, maybe even lose a little bit of money, but that's not to say that your Facebook ads won't be effective. You have to keep in mind that this is a learning experience. You're investing in Facebook ads to learn. So if you spend $500 on your $500 course and you're just, you break even, that's a good result. That's a great result when you're just starting out. And that's when you start optimizing your ads and working on um, learning more about your target audience and seeing um, who you should target with your next campaign and so on. But you have to be ready to spend at least the same amount of money that you sell your course for in order to get the first traction. That's great. You got, but it's back to this copy question, but you also got to be very careful that you you can't actually say, well, if you join this course, you'll get this result on Facebook. Am I right? They won't, that will get your advert. Dis- you, you, you're being pretty quick, wasn't it? So it it really depends on the actual phrase. I've ri- I, I never give promises. Like you're definitely going to get this result, but I do talk about what kind of results to expect. And if I want to showcase some of the results that are possible, what I do is like a little bit of a workaround. So I just show testimonials of my clients and of my previous students. So I show them, okay, see, this is what they achieved. You can achieve something, you know, in this space as well. Um, So that's kind of a workaround that I usually use. And that's perfectly acceptable. Facebook allows that. And people are actually really attracted to testimonials. This is a really, really great strategy. Some of the best strategies that I've used for my clients and for myself is to use those testimonials because people love seeing opinions of someone else. That's not you because promoting my own product, it's, you know, it's easy for me to say, yeah, the face, the science of Facebook ads is the best Facebook advertising course that you'll ever get. So that's easy for me to say, but it's not as easy to get really good testimonials about people telling how they increased their sales for 30% just by using Facebook ads, for example. I've got another question, but I don't know if Cindy's got a question. Got a question? No, I do too, but go ahead, Jonathan. I'll let you, you finish right. with your thought. Thank you. That's nice. Um, and that, what's your? There's been a lot of con, a lot of discussion recently. Um, a lot of it from Social Media Examiner about long form video, and it doesn't really work on Facebook. I don't know if you were aware that they took down some of their own um, long form um, episode um, podcast stroke um, videos that they were placing on Facebook. What's your own view about a a good strategy for using video on Facebook? I do tend to, when when it comes to video ads, if you're trying to promote a product, so if your objective is, let's say, to sell more of the science of Facebook ads, I'm definitely going to use a little bit of a, like just a shorter video with a testimonial or two. That said, if I'm trying to 
create some sort of awareness about the potential Facebook advertising has if I'm trying to teach people about different features and different opportunities that are available within the Facebook ads platform, I'm going to upload longer videos. So I don't mind doing that if it's educational, but if it's uh, strictly I've, promotional, I do yeah. tend to stick to shorter formats. Sorry to interrupt there, but I think you've made a fantastic observation there because they were saying that their long form videos weren't working, but I think it was more the format in some ways, which you've so clearly pointed out there that if it's advertised, it was right in the middle. It wasn't advertising, but it wasn't educational what they were putting up. They were right in the dead zone. So and in a way you could combine, you could also say the same thing about YouTube because they were saying they were going to move everything to YouTube, but it's the same thing is that what really works on YouTube is educational videos, isn't it? When you see an ad on YouTube promoting a product, it's usually very, very short because, you know, mm. the attention span, uh, when you're, you're seeing an ad for a product, your attention span is a lot shorter than if you genuinely want to educate yourself about a certain topic. That's when you're actually listening. But if you're seeing an ad for a product, usually you just, you know, stay focused for a couple of seconds, maybe a minute, but that's it. Oh, thanks, yeah. right? Yeah, because if, if it piques your interest, then you can click to go on sort of thing yes. as opposed to learning yeah. specific topics. So that makes yeah. a lot of sense. So what, um, just kind of in terms of the whole, you being with Facebook ads for this length of time, wh where do you see things going? Like in terms of where, you know, they've started out the evolution of Facebook ads, where, where do you kind of see the, 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 next, the next thing with, uh, with respect to Facebook ads? It's really hard to estimate because they're changing things all the time like on a weekly if not daily basis but what i the first thing that i'm that, that i have been observing for a couple of years now is the all of the advanced features that they're implementing especially when it comes to targeting so they're really trying to implement a lot of features that allow you to target a very very specific target audience. And that's where I see the future, uh, the future of Facebook going. I think when it comes to social media and when it comes to advertising on Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, in, well, Instagram is Facebook now, but um, on all the other social media channels, I think Facebook's targeting features um, are the most sophisticated and advanced that I have ever seen. And I think that if they just double down on that and allow you for even more targeting and behavioral targeting and so on, I think, you know, that's where the money lies in, to be honest. That's great. We're going to wrap it up now, folks. Moisa has been a fantastic guest. She always is. Um, always a pleasure talking to you, Moisa. And you have to come back in the new year uh, um, if you're up for it. Um, oh, absolutely. Oh, thanks so much, Moisa. Um, we're going to wrap it up now, folks. We'll be back next week with another great guest giving you great value and insight to make your WordPress-powered course and or learning management system powered course a great success we'll see you next week folks bye